So why is it going live now? Okay, we're we're live now. Okay. I don't know. I think we're live. Let us know in the comments if we are going, if we are in fact live. Type yes if you can hear us and you can see us well. This is our first time uh, doing something like this. So, um, yeah, the first time for everything. So yes. <laughs> we were just talking to ourselves for about five minutes. It'll be fine. So it'll be fine. So uh, uh, let's just go ahead and say welcome to At The Wheel with Cars and Cameras. That's right. Episode one, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Isaac. I'm John. We had about 400 people lined up waiting for us to go live, and uh, I'm really excited to be doing this. So, yeah, we're going to be talking everything small engines. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing a whole lot of yeses, so that is good to see that... Uh, uh, you can hear us and you can see us. So, um, in this podcast, At the Wheel with Cars and Cameras, we are talking everything go karts, mini bikes, small engines in general, and even big engines because, Ike, you work on all kinds of cars in your spare time. I dabble as well. Uh, and just the other things we have going on behind the scenes beyond what you see in our 20 minute episodes because there certainly is a lot, some of which we're getting into today. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Let's just jump right on in. You want to talk about the uh, secrets? Yeah. So, well, we don't we don't need to jump right in. So, the main topic. Give it a few minutes. Yeah, the main topic of today's episode is um is kind of like the secrets and tips that we have for how to buy go karts and mini bikes on the cheap because we certainly get pretty good hookups with with uh, new projects. They are, they they are in our area. However, I do believe. When we went to, uh, where did we go? We could, West Virginia. West Virginia. Couldn't find any go-karts. Yeah, but we'll get into we'll all get, that a yeah. little bit later. Yeah. We're going to wait for a few other people to join, make sure everybody's here. But uh, welcome to the studio. Let us know what you guys think. We threw this puppy together. What's hilarious about our podcast studio, it's set up in the upstairs room of my house. We found this like paneling here from a Goodwill Restore. Yeah, it was on sale. We found this table for forty bucks on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, cool. Threw together this sign with our Crossfire Pro, Pro uh, Plasma table, and um, everything you can see in the shot looks completely set up and intentional. And everything right outside of the shot is like an explosion, just like cords and wires and messes everywhere. We're not going to show that. No. <laughs> so, Ike, what you uh, what do you? It, the way we're going to structure this show is we're going to kind of start things off. We're going to talk a little bit about what we've been up to, maybe behind the scenes, uh, and then we're going to get into our main topic like we've already uh, talked about today. So, Ike, yes. what you been up to, man? I know you got all kinds of crazy projects, buses. Yes, that's right. I've been working on my own YouTube channel, uh, and that's bringing back to uh, life a bunch of uh, vehicles I inherited, and uh the ones lately has been a 1958 bus with a Detroit diesel 671. But what's crazy about those yes. is that it's not just a diesel. It's, it's a, a two-stroke two diesel. supercharged diesel. Yeah, I, I, or blower or whatever. And yeah. Apparently, they don't run without the blower. Oh, at but all? I guess. Interesting. That's what, that's what I keep hearing. And uh, But anyhow, that's a that's a big, big project. <laughs> And uh, in a 61 GMC panel truck, that was pretty fun too. Nice. So that's that's what what I've been doing lately, doing my own thing when I'm off of work here. Um, what have you been doing, buddy? Oh, um, running around like a chicken with my head cut off, learning how to live stream, <laughs> which is fun. It's completely different. Live broadcasting is completely different than making a normal YouTube video. And by the way, everyone, we're planning on. Uh, going live here about once every two weeks uh, on the when podcast. We when, when we, we can. can. It can't be exact because we have crazy schedules. Uh, and also, if you have specific questions for us, uh, leave a super chat, and we will be sure to get to them by the end of the episode. So I want to talk a little bit about my new my new soulmate, which is the Honda oh CT goodness. Trail 90. You I guys aren't ready. I just brought it. <laughs> I, I, just, I just brought it, and, and, and he fell in love with it. But anyway, let's transition to kind of the the reason why you all are here, hopefully other than us, which is kind of how we seem to get great deals on old go-karts and mini bikes. And honestly, Ike is kind of the magician um, when it comes to finding new projects to work on. 
honestly, they just fall in my lap. They're everywhere <laughs> in my area. And uh, just, I, I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. If you want to find a good used go-kart, go to Facebook Marketplace. Um, uh, your your local bargain trader. Yeah, bargain trader is a good idea. Craigslist. And my favorite is actually word of mouth because a, a lot of people have go-karts or mini bikes and they have them shoved into the back of the barn and they've forgotten about them. Yeah, they actually do forget about them. And, and those like, seem, that old thing? Yeah, those seem to be the best deals I have ever found. Yeah, I think, the, go ahead. What? No, I'm, go ahead. No, it's like the rule of thumb is like the ones that aren't for sale are the cheapest, if that makes sense. If someone's taken pretty pictures of one and posted it up on Facebook Marketplace, yeah, it'll be for sale, but it'll be for sale in front of thousands of people. Whereas if you're just like, I don't know, at, at the convenience store and you see in the you know the back of the lot or something, there's an old go-kart tied up. If you talk to the owner, like, oh, yeah, that old thing, my granddaughter rode it for a couple of years, and that's it. So, I'll, I mean, I'll take 50 bucks for it. What could it be worth? And, and, and think about it. When they post it on, like, marketplace or in the bargain trader they kind of look around and see what prices they're going for and here lately they've been kind of high they've been pretty high everything is kind of high right now is it our fault (laughs) it might be our fault i don't know guys we apologize we're just just having fun yeah but um i mean the the best example of this is i'm gonna say that time you went to look at a camaro or a mustang or something you know what i'm talking about yes and, um, I don't know, I think you passed on the car. Or did you buy the car? No, I, I it was a motorcycle. That's okay. right. I, no, I bought the motorcycle. It was Triumph. And the guy was moving, and he had this mini bike just sitting in the yard. I, uh, in fact, it was the, the Hot Rod Mouse. Yep, the Hot Rod Mouse bike. And I it was a, a picture. 20 bucks. Yeah, it was $20. It was a steal. Yeah, because it wasn't like he didn't even post it online. Ike was there looking at a Mustang. No, no, I was there looking at a Triumph Looking motorcycle. at a Triumph motorcycle. I don't know why I have a Mustang. Yeah, I, I look at stuff all the time. <laughs> so, uh, But I do remember this one specifically because I picked up a 73 Triumph uh, 750 motorcycle chopper. Yeah. And boom, there's a chopper mini bike. Yeah. It's pretty rad. Yeah, um, and that was just like the perfect example of, of, of just that. Yeah, the Triumph was cheap. That was a sweet bike, too. Yes. Yeah. And I got a good deal that day. It was like jackpot. <laughs> yeah, great. and that being said, like, you know, they are on Facebook, and, you know, there are some areas of the country or world where they're just not on Facebook or Craigslist, and they're just not for sale. Which, which brings me to if, if you want a go-kart or a mini bike. And they don't have it in your area, why not build one? We or just we just did. <laughs> or you could, uh, you know, convince the wife to go on vacation in the Outer Banks. Oh, honey, it's beautiful out there. Oh, let's just make ten pit stops on the way because there are lots of go karts in North Carolina. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But uh, the mini bike. Yeah, we just built a mini bike in days. Yeah, just just a few days. We do have a bender and a CNC plasma table and a welder, but. You could accomplish it with just a cheap welder and some parts. Or a torch. Or a torch. Heat up the pipe, bend it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's the old school way. For real. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, your, your other option is is to build if you can't buy, um, which I know I, I, we've always talked about doing a wooden go-kart. I would still love to do that. I want to do it. When I are we going to do it? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I would, we're talking about it now. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's get on it, dude. I know. I'd, I'm down. It'd be fun. Could be part of the uh, amphibious go-kart because wood floats. Wood you does know. float. Two two birds with one stone. <laughs> so, yeah, you could build a go-kart out of wood. I think there are a couple of YouTube videos out there. Uh, I think Build, Break, Repeat did one. I haven't seen it in a while. Um, there was an old one hanging up in Go Power Sports. Oh, a wooden one? A wooden one. Nice. Yeah, in, in fact, the steering was wooden and everything. Nice. Wow. That's crazy. That's a little scary. <laughs> it really is. I, I wouldn't want to go fast on one of those. No, not at all. I would, but I wouldn't want to. <laughs> yes. I don't want to go fast. Yeah, so, I mean, your options are wood, 
getting a cheap welder, getting some tubing, becoming a YouTube certified mechanic, YouTube certified fabricator, excuse me. There we go. And, uh, and just taking a shot at it. Um, or you can get an old riding lawnmower and just modify it like we did. That's another option, but that's not the same experience as a go kart or mini bike. I don't know. Ours was pretty good. It was good, but it's not the same as a go kart or mini bike. No, not really. But it was it was up there. 60, yeah. sixty five miles per hour on a riding lawnmower. Oh yeah, it's a top five project was, for me. Which was, we're, we're we need to bring it back soon. <laughs> I, I'd do it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, if you can't buy, build. But, uh, but you know, when we were both kids, and this is a funny story on both of our sides, ne- none of our parents, like, and we grew up like 20 years apart, so none of our parents let us uh, have go-karts or mini bikes when we were kids. My parents always said they were dangerous and there's no place to ride them. Look at us now. <laughs> yeah, joke's on you guys now, isn't it? <laughs> it's my career. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't allowed to go-kart growing up and uh, or mini bike and uh what did i do i think 12 years old i went out and bought a 20 dollar go-kart and didn't tell the parents so what i don't understand about this story that ike tells is how did you get it home if you're 12 years old and don't have a truck i mean it was local like you must have ridden your bike there um no oh yeah yeah did ride my bike there found it oh excuse me Found the bike, uh, go kart, and it was probably eight blocks away. So, found it. I think it was twenty bucks. It was an old Manco two seater go kart. And then my neighbor, it didn't have an engine on it, by the way. My neighbor had an old tiller with a five horse Briggs on it. Gave it to us. Took the motor off, put it on the go kart, and we were terrorizing the neighborhood for the next couple of years. That sounds pretty... The end of that story is exactly like the end of my story. Oh, really? <laughs> terrorizing neighborhoods for years. Oh, well. <laughs> and now I'm doing it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, my story is similar, except... And what's funny is that, like, <laughs> your parents didn't let you get one. You got one anyway. My parents didn't let me get one. But I was building them with Ike... And I kept borrowing his, and I was tearing it up. So one time for Christmas in 2014, 13, Christmas 2013, I think it was, you gave me a go-kart because you were like, stop tearing mine up. Here's this. Tear this up instead. I paid $200 for it. What was it, a Margate? No, what was it? Uh, Phantom Racing Chassis. Uh, Phantom Racing Chassis. That's right. Yeah, I love that thing, dude. 200 bucks, and I gave it to John, and I was like, here. And I took my go-kart back. And the funny thing was, since I had it, like, because it was on, like, the property, like, the parents really didn't have anything else to say about it. They weren't like, get that thing out of here. I mean, you're a grown man. Yeah, I was probably 16, but that's pretty okay. grown. That's yeah, 16, your parents can't let you get a go-kart. But teenager. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I so apologize <laughs> um, to John's father. It is my fault that your yard has been torn up. Yeah, and I would like to have my dad on the show sometime because that would be a lot of fun to get his side of things of uh, of us tearing up some of <laughs> that would be hilarious his stuff. Yeah, I want I want the best. You know, tell me the funniest story, sir. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to hear that too. But you know, just like Ike's, uh, just like Ike's story. After I got a go kart, I terrorized the neighborhood for years. Well, then we did until at which point the police came by. Yes. Have we told this story? Uh, well, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think we've told it on the yeah. you know, <laughs> internet. The police came by, and they told us that, um, I mean, they, they knew it was us. Yeah. We, you know, the whole everyone in town knows we're the go-kart people. And uh, they told us that if they heard anything else, more complaints from neighbors. They'd arrest us on the spot. Yeah. So uh, I didn't want to go to jail. Neither did I. <laughs> so that's a, a part of the reason why I went ahead and bought this place here. Yeah, that's why we got out of Dodge. That's why we got out of Dodge. <laughs> yeah, for real. So we are going to go ahead and answer a few Super Chat questions because uh, we have had quite a few come in, and then we're going to get on to more of our tips on uh, how to buy a cheap go-kart or mini bike. Thank you, by the way. 
Oh, for all the super for chats. The super yeah, chats. thank you for all the super chats. Yes. All right, I'm going to have to zoom in here. Thank Doing you, it all live, I folks. can't see. All right. From the Redneck Gamer for the win. Great ta- content guy. Been watching since day one, LOL. Thanks, thank dude. You. Thank you for your donation. Uh, yeah, we have a bunch of fun stuff planned with... Well, we, we have a bunch of special episodes planned, and uh, these Super Chats are going to go into the special episode fund. Awesome. <laughs> uh, another one from hashtag RoadLife89. Have you ever thought about building a mini bike just for fun? We just did. Yeah, that's what we do for a living, bro. <laughs> we just <laughs> yeah, built, <laughs> like from scratch, yeah. a mini bike. And I got to say, it is Awesome. It is so cool. Yeah, you can find. I don't think I have an assembled version of it on my uh, Instagram yet, but uh, you can find the painted frame on my Instagram. We just built our own first custom mini bike ever, and I have to say, we need to do another one soon because it was a lot of fun. I learned a lot, and it wasn't too much of a headache. And I think the second one would be a lot better. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, we could definitely improve. The first one was good too. Yep. All right, let's see here. From SPOC, my son and I bought an old Manco go-kart with the original tire load to Kumsa engine in it. Do you think we should do the engine swap or live axle first? Hmm. Uh, I'm going to have to say the engine swap first because if it's a tired old engine, it might not be able to push a live axle. I don't know. That's a good point. That's a good point. And if it's for you and your son, you know, who may be experienced, may be inexperienced, I'd say something with a not live axle is probably a little easier to control. Well, That's with low, ho- low horsepower. Low horsepower. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. A Predator 6.5 or a Tillotson 212 should uh, really get you going. Yep. All right, one more Super Chat question, and then we're back to uh, our uh, cheap go-kart mini bike uh, topic. Uh, you guys from Josh Graham, you guys ever going to hit the reboot button on the monster truck and what happened to the diesel engine? Reboot button. We've wanted to build a monster truck 2.0. We have the body. We have the technology in the body. Just haven't done it yet. So, yep. yeah, we got it in uh, in store. Yep. But the diesel engine. So mm. we had – what? <laughs> yeah, no. So what happened is we had a subscriber reach out and say he would machine us a custom uh, – uh, Flywheel. Flywheel, thank you. At a billet aluminum because our original flywheel on that diesel engine was scary. Like, there were air bubbles in the casting. Some of the the cooling fins were already broken before we even cranked the darn thing. Like, this thing was sketchy. Uh, And for safety reasons, this guy, he offered to machine us a brand new aluminum one. So we shipped him our flywheel and haven't really heard much since. So I guess that's to say, you know, good intentions, um, but... uh, you know, sometimes you get what you pay for, right? <laughs> yeah. So we're looking for another flywheel. So we're looking for, for a flywheel diesel. for uh, one of the Chinese diesel engines. <laughs> Let us know. Send me an email. All right. So uh, anyway, back to it. Thank you for the super chats. Yes. And we will uh, answer more of them uh, in just a few minutes here. So where were we, Isaac? Oh, goodness. Where oh, were we at? Hey, if you're going to be buying a go-kart or mini bike, it doesn't hurt to learn how to negotiate and barter. Yes, just because they're asking $300 doesn't necessarily mean they're going to take less than, you know, you know th- there's there's room for bartering and trading, too. Some people might want a bicycle to replace their go-kart or maybe some gold or something. I don't know. With the pr- way prices are going <laughs> right now with go-karts and mini bikes, you might have to slip them some gold every once in a while. Or a kidney, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, it doesn't hurt to uh, to learn how to negotiate. That's always important. Works for me. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Usually, you hit him with the, what's your bottom dollar? Gets him every time. My favorite part is, hey, man, hold like 50 bucks. And I'm going to act like I don't have enough money. <laughs> hey, John. Um, you spot me, man. Can you yeah, spot can me? Give me some money, man. <laughs> it works. Yeah. <laughs> so um, for now on, if uh, if I'm buying in a go-kart or a mini bike from any one of y'all, yeah, I don't have enough money. <laughs> <laughs> um. On top of that, moving on, it doesn't hurt to either be mechanically inclined or bring a friend who is mechanically inclined. Because I can speak from personal experience more than one time. Um, 
Now, yeah, you can buy a basket case go-kart, and even if it's only a $60 go-kart, it might be worth zero. Yes. One time I looked at one, and I passed on it. It had a uh, threaded rod live axle kit. Yeah, it was pretty sweet. Sounds like one of our early builds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, the, sh- the frame was shaped like a banana. Um, but one that you did buy. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was a piece of crap. Had a fiberglass. It was a what, Batmobile. Like Indy car body It was or a something. Batmobile. And the, and the frame was completely rotted out underneath. Yeah, I thought the Batmobile part looked cool. It was cool. It's still sitting in the yard. You live and you learn, guys. Yeah. What was that one, 100 bucks? Probably. <laughs> anyway, that can be cannon fodder for our monster truck go-kart. No? It has plastic wheels Not that wheel useless. It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does, it's got plastic wheels. They put plastic wheels on a yeah. go-kart. Yeah. So, <laughs> moving on. Yeah, moving on. Our next tip is... Um, be realistic. If it's your first project and you live in 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 downtown, uh, and you live in Manhattan, and probably probably shouldn't get a go kart or mini I bike. I don't think you can get anything. You can go to a rental place and rent a go kart, but I probably wouldn't buy right. anything. Uh, but let, let's say you want a go kart, um, and you live out in the country. I'm thinking a off road go kart would be best. My personal favorite is your like dog. I was going to say a Yurf dog. Uh, I love a Yurf dog. Um, another one is good. Uh, Murray. The, the Murray Nitro. Is it Nitro? Kilowatt? Kilowatt. That's what it was. That's a big go-kart. and Lots of suspension. But it's only a one, construction. one-seater. One-seater. Yeah. yeah. But uh, just be realistic about what your surroundings are like. If you have a lot of asphalt to ride on, which I am extreme, extremely envious of you, Get a racing cart, or if you have a flat field, like I knew, and I mean flat, uh, get a racing go kart, a, a yard cart, a yard cart, like an American Express, um, or like my old, like a Margay, or uh, an old Phantom racing chassis, something like that. And and the uh, Honda clone engines are like perfect right now. They have all kinds of parts, and and they're pretty reasonable. Yep. Um, the Honda, uh, the the, sorry, the Briggs which is my favorite, the old Briggs Five Horses, you can't find any of those anymore. And when you do find them, they're about war slam out. It's just Father Time doing his job, dude. John doesn't like Briggs. We're really going to go there, dude? I'm throwing we you only, under the bus. We don't have that much time. Oh, goodness. <laughs> it's not that I don't <laughs> like Briggs, everybody. I it's, like Briggs just fine. Uh, just just like what I was saying, when you find them, they're war slam out. Yeah. And all the ones I brought, for us to mess with were pieces of junk. I mean, but we have we have at least one or two good ones. We have a good one on our mini bike we put together with a Briggs, our vintage mini bike. And yep. of course, can't forget the rat rod wagon. It's a smoker. Yeah, but it's awesome. <laughs> it's pretty fast. It's got a lot of go fast parts in that one. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Charles. Yeah, thanks, Charles. Appreciate it, dude. Um, go kart versus mini bike. Oh okay. So I guess circling back a little bit. If I was going to start all over again, I'd do it exactly how I how I did it before. I'd have my friend buy me one. No, I would get a, a racing go-kart. Uh, I just The look is awesome. They're really darn simple. There's no suspension to potentially fail. They're really lightweight. You can easily put it in the back of a pickup truck. And they'll go through a yard. They'll go through a yard. They're not as easy to tip as a tall go-kart. And they are so much fun. I've never... Uh, I've never almost flipped I've, I've never flipped one of those it would be gnarly if you did though because there's no I'm, rollover i'm sure if when it happens it'll be violent um i've flipped plenty of other things though yeah your dog lawnmower that's all i got right now oh man what about the uh the other day at the swamp Oh, yeah, a couple of go-karts. Yeah, a little oh, go-kart. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I flipped my share, my fair share of go-karts. Yeah, me too. I crashed into trees, people, butts, a little bit of everything. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> if you don't, go watch our Gambler Enduro race video. Watch it, because there's a scene with a slight accident. It was more than a slight. It wasn't It wasn't intentional. Though. No, it, it was wasn't intentional. intentional. Watch it. You're gonna you're gonna laugh I so hard. Crashed into someone while they were. You rear-ended them. I did. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. I rear-ended them. 
<laughs> uh, and then finally, uh, you have to decide, do I buy new or do I buy used? I would honestly, I'd buy used. If you're just starting off and you want to learn, if you want to learn and you don't have a big budget, buy used. And you want to learn how to wrench on stuff. Yep. Buy used one. Uh, me personally, I like used stuff. Um, I haven't really priced the new stuff. So I guess it's whatever your budget is, really. Yeah. I mean, yeah. me personally, used. Yeah. If you have 500 bucks, that'll get you into a used go-kart. You should have your pick of the litter for $500 with some budget uh, for upgrades or repairs, too. Uh, if your budget is more like $1,000, then, yeah, you're talking nice brand-new mini bikes, nice brand-new go-karts. Stuff like that. So it all just depends. Of course, you know, you can do it all for 200 bucks too, but you might be waiting around uh, for three months waiting for a good deal to pop up on Facebook. They're out there. Yeah, they're out there. Not as much. Yeah, it's just a timing thing and, uh, yeah, really just timing. Yeah, $200, probably the probably the best way is word of mouth on yeah. that. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah. Um, and if you just straight up can't get a go-kart or mini bike for whatever reason, uh, like you live in a really dense area, you don't have room for it, there's no place to legally ride, whatever, um, go to a rental racetrack. Those work pretty good. The one over by my house. I, they, they, <laughs> okay, it, yeah, it I should is, clarify. It is the slowest go-kart track I have ever been at. And not one of those. Not one like behind your local roller skating rink or like the one at the beach. Um, there are like racing, real racing go-kart rental tracks out there. Like the ones closest to us are like the GoPro Motorplex near Charlotte, North Carolina. Those are pretty fast. Yeah. Uh, they go 50, 55 miles an hour. That's what they claim. And I definitely believe it. And you can really hone your skills as a, as a driver on something like that. And you don't have to maintain it and take it home at the end of the day either. Another one I really like is, uh, the Go Power Sports, the... Yeah, uh, Rockwood, uh, Rockwood, Rockwood go karts and mini golf. Yeah, it's it's a very small track, in the but Dallas they are Fort Worth area. Really fast go karts. <laughs> I got to say, I, that's like one of the funnest times I've ever had. Yeah, you, you roll up and you're like, oh boy, here we go, another one of these go kart tracks where they go like nine miles an hour. No, though they're like they're big blocks. They're they're Predator four twenties or GX three nineties, one of the two, and they're I don't think they're governed, dude. Like. I don't you know, get in a pack of like five or six people, and it is a ton of fun. So if you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, uh, Rockwood go-karts and mini bikes. And tell them Cars and Cameras sent you. Yeah. Uh, Virginia International Raceway also has a rental track. That one's fun, too. That one's uh, pretty fun. Yeah, of course, renting go-karts, it can get pricey, but uh, you know, it's a good way to try before you buy. How about that? That's actually, <laughs> yeah. Good yeah, way to put def- it. Definitely try it before you buy it. Because you might hate it. I've had friends who are like, yeah, I want to be a race car driver. And I bring them out there, and they're like, man, that's more exercise than I thought it was going to do. What is this? <laughs> oh, yeah. And if you don't have anything like that, get yourself a really fast RC car. Oh, yeah. I hadn't, I hadn't gotten one yet. I got a boat, but uh, not an RC car. I, actually, I like the crawler. I think that the crawler would be better. Yeah, it depends on, again, your environment. But, like, an RC car, they can be really Really fast and really, really fun. What, what's the one that you have? I have a Traxxas Slash, the 3S, the one with the lithium battery, the big dog that'll yeah. do like 70 miles an hour. That it's thing <laughs> that thing at like 35, 40 miles per hour, when you give it the beans, it'll do a wheelie and, and flip. flip over backwards. Yeah, so it's like this little RC car. It's like not even two feet long, uh, but it'll go 70 miles an hour. Yeah. Sweet. So if you can't get a go-kart or a mini bike, maybe an RC car. Uh, if you're looking to have some fun on four wheels. <laughs> yeah. Not you personally, but like. Yeah, to, yeah. to live vicariously through. <laughs> uh, like, you know, the lithium battery in a computer. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's our that's our main topic we we're going to talk about. Oh, but one, one more thing. What's oh, that? I think I already said it. What? Don't tell your parents they've got the go-kart. <laughs> It worked for me. Yeah, it worked for me too. So I mean, you're you're two for two. You know, you buy a go kart, and you don't tell your parents, and you know, all of a sudden they're like, "Look, it's like it's like, like when like when you come home with a cat or a dog, like they're gonna say no, but then once it's there and they see how cute it is, there's right. no way they can turn it away. I I gotta cover my butt. What you, you got to tell your parents? Yeah, definitely. Don't just go out and buy a go kart and don't tell your parents. Yeah, don't blame it on us. It please. worked for us, but not for everybody. That's right. So we promised we were getting to the rest of these Super Chat questions. 
We're going to finish up the rest of the scheduled program first, though, I think. And uh, another thing we kind of wanted to talk about um, on this new podcast is kind of new car news. So I like to stay up to date on kind of all the new latest and greatest technology in cars. And Ike, I don't. as you guys know, um, he doesn't. Yeah, and he's like an old school guy. And usually just when he and I are in the shop, just like in the middle of shooting a video, like we'll start talking about this and it'll just make for a hilarious conversation. Yeah, because every time you start talking about it, I'm like, I, I shake my head. I can't believe you keep up with these newer cars. I, <laughs> they just don't do anything for me. So, so Ike, today's topic. Did you see that Volkswagen is planning on changing its name to Volkswagen? So that's Volkswagen to Voltswagen. Uh, potato and potato? <laughs> no, no, no. One is Volk, the other is Volt with a Volt because you know Why electric cars, electric oh. cars, bro. All right. Well, uh, congratulations on 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 changing your name. They're not doing it yet, though, right? No, They're just talking about it. Yeah. Okay, well, if if uh, if we are going with uh, electric cars, I think that's actually a pretty cool idea. I mean, I mean that's they're so close to Volt with the Volts. Yeah, you know, I bet half the people already say Volkswagen anyway. Well, you know, when you say it, when you said it, it kind of sounded the same <laughs> to me. When I brought it up with him in the shop the other day, yeah, yeah he was, I, like, I was like, "You're saying the same yeah. thing, dude." <laughs> what's, what's the difference, man? And then he had to, like, slowly bolt volks. And I'm like, oh, okay. But I did a little bit more research. Yeah? It was just an April Fool's joke. Seriously? Yeah, they're not doing it. Ah. <laughs> it, was, it was just shameless marketing ploy for their new electric car. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they're not doing it. So it's it. still going to be a Volkswagen. <laughs> hey, that was clever. That was good. That was good. <laughs> that was good. That's awesome. So, um, I've been looking forward to this exact moment all day. Okay. Because now I get to talk about S- our our super chats. Oh yeah, let's talk about super chats. But yeah. I need to talk about the uh, the Honda. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so uh, this is from Josh. You guys should build a bridge for riding go karts across your pond. Make it part of the Grand Prix. That's, that's an awesome idea. That's a lot. That'd be of, a big bridge. That's a lot of bridge. Plus, I would like to put a jet ski in there one day, and it's really going to hinder my jet ski experience if I put a bridge in there. But we are planning on putting other bridges across other streams later yeah. on. We just yeah. need some help. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Twenty bucks from the Redneck Gamer. Uh, wait, we already. Uh, hold on, we already saw these. My bad guys. My bad guys. All right, let's try refreshing. Oh, man, so many super chats. All right. Ike, what do you got, dude? What's new? What? Oh, I'm sorry. It's um, all right. <laughs> just, like, trying to pull this up. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say, what What, what were you going to be talking about? What was it, the Honda? The Honda. Trail. CT Trail 90. 90. Yes, I just brought... To work, a Honda Trail 90. Uh, my brother actually scooped it up for me. It's actually pretty sweet. It's a 79 CT 90. Yes. And it looks. I love it. He doesn't <laughs> love it so much. I, I got the Super Chat. So let's do the okay. Super Chats first. Okay, we'll continue <laughs> we'll with circle this. Back. All right. Anyway, from Robert Norris, have you guys ever thought about messing with two-stroke engines? We've done a couple. We've done a couple? I just personally kind of like four stroke better. It's just what I know. Um, I'm not know opposed you, to learning. I know you can get a lot more out of the two strokes, but uh, yeah, I'm still a, a, a four stroke guy. Yeah, we put a two stroke uh, 340 on a Murray kilowatt. It's a 440. The 440, actually. that thing went like stink. Uh, yeah. We also have a 670 cc. Is it yeah. a triple or a twin? It's a twin. I think it's a twin. Yeah, uh, from one of our subscribers shipped us, like, the front half of a snowmobile, and that engine is just kind of waiting around for a build. It's got, like, 110 horsepower or something. Yeah, we got something figured out for it. Yeah, we do. Um, So, yeah, we have uh, some two-stroke stuff in the past and in the future going on. From Dax Car, please bring back to Poland 
Rat rod tractor, no engine, smaller than the drag rail 670. I've never been to Poland, but I'd love to go. Well, is it, uh, is he talking about the, the Oh, probably the lawnmower. Mower. Probably, yeah, okay, that's a, uh, yeah, that's a, uh, uh, the uh, lawnmower. Yeah, yeah. I think no engine, smaller than the drag rail 670. I mean, it had a 670 on it. Yeah, well, that's. Of course, 670 needs to go back on it. I mean, we built the drag rail, but I think that 670 really belongs in that lawnmower. It really does. That's how I feel about it's, that. It was, it was so fun until I flipped it. <laughs> <laughs> you want to read this one? Okay. So, uh, Mini X, uh, $5, thank you. Uh, if you ever would sell the rat rod wagon, how much would it be? Ooh, that's a good one. Man, it's priceless. It's one of uh, my favorite builds. Yeah. But if I had to put a price on it, it would be a I don't want to sell it price. Of five thousand dollars. Oh, I was gonna say five thousand too. Oh, yeah, like yes. wildly overpriced for yeah. the junk I that mean, it is. You but know, I, I I just can't sell it. Yeah, that's the first thing that we ever really built together. But if I were to build another one, what do you think? Six thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it would be a two point oh. It would be better. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's see here. Um, oh man. Let's see here. Uh, from Crawler BP, thank you for bringing families together in the mo- this most troubling time. Seeing my daughter do her first wall burnout at five years old is the most amazing thing that I've ever seen. LOL. That is awesome. That's good. That is so cool. That's good. I hope my kid one day I know. <laughs> would do that. I'd be like, yeah. Wow, I almost brought a tear to my eye, dude. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. That's that's awesome. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, happy to be doing what we do and glad to share it with you guys. It's fun. I just, yeah, I just wish, um, you know, it was, like, safer to have meets and stuff, which we're planning on having a mini mayhem come maybe June or July. Really like to do it because we are going to the paid swap meet this year next month um, with Go Power Sports. In Texas. In Texas, yeah. Yep. Uh, so we are planning on doing a mini mayhem this summer. It's going to be a lot of fun. But, Good. yeah, uh, thanks for your support, Crawler uh, BP. All right, from Cody, what was the most fun build to ride and put together? Mm, that's a good one. Um, the most fun, that would be not scary. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to have to say the the rat rod wagon was fun and not scary. Yeah. Fun and scary was the uh, the mower. <laughs> the Hondukey? Oh, the mower. The mower <laughs> was, <laughs> fun. was fun. But it also got scary. Yeah, real scary. Yeah. So uh, that's the two that kind of stick out in my head. The Ducardi, that was just terrifying. Um, yeah, you reach a point where speed, more speed is more fun, and then you hit a threshold, and then more speed becomes less and less fun. Yes. That would be the Ducardi all day long. Ducardi, Honduki, Lawnmower. One mower is close to that point of maximum fun. It's just like over the edge, just a little bit. I, I, th- I think there was something scarier than the lawnmower. I, I just can't think of it right now. So, uh, yeah, let's see here. Still working through these super yeah. chat so, questions. Uh, what were we talking about? Was it the Trail Ninety? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, the Trail Ninety. Um, I was about to laugh because I, I'm I'm not. They're not my favorite because every time I look at it. I think of the early nineties <laughs> and and he all. He doesn't want to say it, dude. It, it, this is our podcast, bro. It's edgy. You can say it. Oh, I can. Yeah, but it's on the channel. It's all right. Okay, so every time I saw one of those scooters riding around, uh, the what looked like a Trail ninety riding around town was like a Tomos moped or something, and and the guy had a case of beer on the. On the scooter because he lost his license and he was drinking. Yeah. What, you, yeah. <laughs> what he's trying to say is... The Trail 90 are... looks like a drunk bike. Yeah. And John loves it. <laughs> and and he he just... He it's has so cool. he wasn't there. He wasn't so even cool. born when when those Tomos mopeds were popular. Yeah, let's pull this puppy up. So check out these broadcasting skills, folks. Bam! Got a photo. Uh, for everyone watching right now, of the Honda Trail 90 that Ike just bought. 300 bucks. 300 bones, which is a screaming deal from what we've seen. Does that not look like a Tomos drunk sickle? <laughs> see, I wasn't, see, 
when when I was growing up and now, people who lose their license due to I, yeah drunk sickles look like uh you know they look like scooters they they don't look like that not anymore yeah I think that is cool that reminds me of uh like rugged dual sport I I swear like I swear James Bond rode one one time in a in a I feel like all right in Skyfall they were on the tops of some roofs chasing each other and I swear he was on something that looked kind of like that so Ike thinks of Dewey bikes and I think of James Bond. Yeah, isn't that hilarious? <laughs> Just basically like 10 to 15 years difference. <laughs> yeah. I used to, I'd, I'd see something like that, like everywhere. And the, and it was all the local drunk guys riding them. Yeah. Oh, by the way, there are some more Super Chats. Uh, we just are going to get to them at the end of the show because like, the technology is being wonky, but we will get to them. Um, anyway, CT90. All right. here's our, Ike doesn't like it for one reason, and that's the looks. Yes. There are about a thousand reasons to like it. First off. The 17-inch wheels? No. No. Dude, forget the wheels. Look at the grocery baskets on that thing. (laughs) (laughs) You can fit a lot of beer in that. Dude, come on. A lot of (laughs) grocery. Yeah. (laughs) Wine. (laughs) Whatever. Yeah, whatever you want. But um, basically. Liquor. liquor. Yeah, anything, man. Uh, there's all kinds of room for activities. Basically, I've been wanting to build a Honda Trail 70, which is right there. Look at that. Look at that yellow one. That That is a sexy bike. I've been wanting to build a Trail 70 like this that actually has real utility. And by buying this, there it is. By buying that, you just made my job a lot easier. I can just go out and buy one of those. All you got to do to that one is get the engine running and and put some new tires on it, and you can go to the ABC store all day long. Dude, all right. We're talk about beating a dead horse. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> no, but what is really cool about this thing, besides the grocery bags, yep. is that it has this removable auxiliary fuel tank on oh, it. Oh, yeah, that one was hiding over there. Yeah. I saw that, and it was like, that is so cool. Someone thought out a... a it's like it's like a miniature jerry can, yeah, or gas can on the side of the of the bike, and it it looks it's proper. It looks good up there. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Like it's something that you can like take off and walk to the gas yeah. station. Why didn't Honda do it for the Trail Seventy? Huh? Probably because there's like no room. no room. <laughs> it's too small. Um, but beyond the removable fuel tank and the grocery baskets, I'm just having too much fun with this thing right now. Uh, you have these, what, 17-inch wheels? Yeah, so it's got to ride pretty good. Yeah. Um, at the the bike is actually very comfortable to sit on. I I sat on it. The handlebars are in the right place. The seat is nice and uh, cushy. The pegs feel pretty good. Uh, apart from the looks, it's a very decent bike. Oh, yeah, it's got a high and low range, too. Yes. So... I can't wait to get it running and start riding it and see, like, the high and low range. The off-road cap- capabilities and on-road, I, I just can't wait to see. Yeah, it just has all the features on it. It's really cool. Yeah. John John is just smiling ear to ear when he saw it. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, didn't mean to put that up there. What? <laughs> <laughs> I was I was trying to dig through and find a photo of Trail Seventies, and I came across this gem of Ike and his um. Where where's the button for the crickets? <laughs> the, his uh, his chaps. Um. Anyway, so Honda Trail Ninety. See it soon on the Cars and Cameras YouTube channel. Uh, the big brother to the Trail Seventy, which is my all around favorite uh, favorite motorcycle. I wouldn't say Am I allowed to big, say that big brother. Because the ST90 would be the big brother. It's weird how they named it. I think that's that's more like the uncle. Yeah, then <laughs> the naming doesn't make any sense. The CT70 and the ST90 look the same. The frame looks yeah, it's identical. so weird. It's so weird. I don't understand. Uh, but anyway, so that's that is what we have going on very soon, and I am so excited because it is awesome. I'm glad for you. All right, let's get to the rest of these super chats. Ike, you got anything else there, buddy? Anything else? Oh, not not really. Um, other than you know talking about our 
pretty rad four wheeler. The Hondukey. The Hondukey. Let's save Hondukey for another day. Okay, that's <laughs> fine. Um. Anyway, here we have some super chats. I'm going to do them out of order. Um, so from Eugene Backyard Repair, you should build a go-kart that skips across water. We've talked about it. Skis on front, paddle, uh, skis on front, paddles, tires on the rear. Leave wheels sticking through skis enough to get up to speed. Have you been in our planning meeting, sir? Yeah, we've talked about it. Um, but the problem is we got to have a good place to try it out the the pond is not quite we'd have to leave the land and hit the water at the right basically a zero degree angle maybe yeah. like one degree yeah and your pond is not equipped to do that we'd have to like dig out a little bit on the pond yeah, you could dude okay well we could keep it in mind okay and and the exit too would have to be about the same. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to be hitting a a, a, a berm on the other side. No, that would hurt. That would that would be terrible. Maybe Busco Beach, but even then, it'd be difficult to find that, something. That one, that one would do it. Yeah, yeah. That way, we're not digging up my backyard. We're digging up somebody else's backyard. That's true. We could get enough speed going on land. We wouldn't even have to pad, have to have the paddle tires. We could just skip across. Yeah. And if not, we just tie rope to it beforehand so we can Recovery. like recover it. <laughs> All right, from Random Garage, you guys should bring back the 420 golf cart. It's uh, it's at the house. It's at the house. We got it. Yeah. Uh, if we bring it back, I want to do something wild to it. Well, either something wild to it or just use it for a utility because I mean, I could kind of use a utility vehicle out here. It was actually pretty good. That was a pretty fun project. I, I like that one. Cruising around um, town on a golf cart. Yeah. Um, <laughs> electric start, though. We have to leave electric start on because uh, it was a real pain to – every time it stalled, I had to walk around to the back <laughs> of the golf cart. every red light. <laughs> and, and pull start that thing. And uh, it, it was not easy. So the next one, electric start. Most definitely. Um, let's see what else. Do you want to take this one right here? Sure. Uh, how do you say that? That Fract looks like fractal. Fractal. Uh, thank you for your contribution. Where is the best place to find rolling chassis of go-karts? Other than Craigslist, I live in a small rural area, so pickings are super, super slim. Well, like I said earlier, well, like we said, word of mouth is like probably the best way. Uh, if, if you don't have one in that area then maybe an aunt and an uncle has one in the next area or whatever. And uh, if all else fails, uh, build one. Um, you can get uh, pipe and everything you need from, like, Go Power Sports spindles, live axles, and uh, your local uh, Harbor Freight would have a good engine. Uh, you can build one. I don't know. What do you think? Four or 500 bucks? Yeah, it'll be more expensive than finding a, a cheap used one. Yeah, yeah. You can build one for maybe four or five hundred dollars. I mean, it, if you're lucky, you can build one cheaper than that. Yeah. Um, uh, so, but something that we didn't touch on earlier, uh -huh. and it's gone. Oh, dang it. <laughs> um. So anyhow. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, I got. Go it. ahead. Um. You know, sometimes, like, you know, remember how we bought the fifty dollar go kart? Yes. We just like saw a go kart in someone's yard and we just stopped not, and asked about stopped it. Stopped and asked about it. And he wanted fifty dollars for it. Yeah, because it wasn't for sale and he didn't know how much it was worth. And, and then it became so it was the fifty dollar go kart. Then it became the amphibious go kart. <laughs> if y'all hadn't seen that one, y'all ought to see it. It got like a million views and in, in a week, it was <laughs> it was awesome. And it was fun. Yeah, yeah. the The best part was Taylor. The whole premise was. Let's trick our friend into seeing, into getting on this go kart that will surely sink, and then we'll go have lunch. And yeah, it but didn't it floated, sink. yeah. And we had lunch anyway. Yeah, <laughs> it, was it was great. Um, and then it became the uh, monster truck, which is, in my eyes, legendary. Yeah. That thing is jacked up in more than one way. It's awesome. Not janked up, jacked <laughs> up. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it just goes to show that sometimes if you see someone that has like a lot of stuff in their yard, like 
they might have an old go kart they want to sell. Yeah. Now, if they have like no trespassing signs and stuff, maybe respect people's property and privacy. Yeah. Um, we'll do that anyway. And and the uh, the fifty dollar go kart that that frame was actually really really simple. It was a one wheel peel, mm-hmm. and by the time we were done with it, it had a live axle, full suspension, and a fiberglass body on it. Like you might as well say we built that thing from scratch. Definitely. So, yeah. I mean, it can be done. Oh, you want to take this one, Ike? Oh, which one? The uh, oh, the gamer. The, the gamer. Thank you for your contribution. I love the videos, guys. I've been trying to get a two seater go kart for my kids. Growing up, I had a two seater streaker go kart, but my mom talked me into selling it for a hundred dollars. So sorry. Uh, most regretful decision ever. Um. Well, uh. Again, word of mouth. Uh, do you have a, a local tractor supply? I've seen go karts for sale at our tractor tractor supply. Yeah, tractor um, supply. They have like Coleman's. And I think Coleman is their brand they of do. choice. Um, where else? D- didn't Walmart have some? Yeah, go karts. No, oh, that was mini bikes. Yeah, they had mini bikes for sale. Who else has? The the go-karts? problem with like a new, especially a two seater, is that two seater can be pricey. Yeah, it can. Uh, but you know, like hopefully you're watching this and you see that, you know, the word of mouth, Craigslist, uh, uh, Facebook marketplace, Facebook marketplace just asking and, people and just, just yeah. get out there and, and search and eventually one will come along. It might take a while, but they're going to pop up every once in a while. Uh, so thanks again for your donation. Yep. Uh, let's see. John's Garage and Games. Do you ever think about doing a video showing viewers custom builds? Uh, you know, honestly, kind of all of our mini mayhem videos are like mini little segments of showcasing other people's builds. I'd, I'd like to someday. I mean, even maybe someday on this podcast, we could talk about some viewer builds. That would be cool. Now, was is he talking? Okay. So viewers custom, custom builds. Yes. Uh, the mini mini mayhem works pretty good, um, but going out and just doing videos on other people other people's builds, I, I wouldn't that get a little old. Yeah, I don't know. I, it'd be fun to go on like tour some summer, you know, with a you know, maybe occasionally. I, I like watching them get built, like overhauling for go karts. That's an idea. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> going to people's houses and throwing a paint <laughs> job on it, and maybe a cup holder and. Yeah, and some fuzzy dice hanging from the bar. Twelve inch sub subwoofer. Big big rims on it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm game. Yeah, I'm down for it. Tyler Martin, thanks for your donation, man. Uh, let's see. Uh, love the set you guys are doing. Great. I've come out to see you guys every time you're in Texas. Can't wait for Pate Swap Meet again. Yeah, dude, Tyler. We'll see you out there again. April twenty thirtieth. Twenty third yeah. through the twenty oh wait. I'm not that's, really that's, sure. That's power tour. <laughs> yeah. No, paid, paid swap meet is late April. Uh, you can find more information uh, with Go Power Sports or by just searching paid swap meet. But we will be there. We don't have all the information now because, well, I guess we just weren't ready to announce it. But we will be there. And uh, looking forward to seeing you again there, dude. Yes. All right. John uh, Boat, John Boat Saunders. Saunders. Thank you for your contribution. You guys you- considered. Oh, sorry. Oh no! Have you ever considered buying and modifying a GoPed? No. What's a GoPed? I'm googling. No. Is I that haven't. an electric scooter? I, I think it's a, like an like a. But it's it's gas. Oh, it's a gas powered yes. like razor like scooter. Yes. I will break so many bones. Oh, I would on one die. of those. I, I did I upset you in any ways? Are you trying <laughs> to hurt me? <laughs> I, I, I can't do it, man. I'm I'm too old and and I and fragile, and I can't drive. You know what would be fun? You know those like lime bikes, the lime scooters that are around. Like in in urban areas, you can rent. You can use your phone and rent little electric scooters. I calculated, okay, that we can go rent some if we find some that are ch- fully charged. We can rent them, drive them to my house, and do a lap around the Grand Prix, and then drive them back to where they belong. Should be able to on a full charge. It would have to be a very dry month. Yeah, definitely, because that would get stuck. We'd probably still break a bunch of bones. You want to do it? I'm down. Yeah. All right, sounds good. <laughs> uh, let's see here from Zach. Have oh, you guys? Oh, Zach. Okay. Have you ever got? Have you guys ever had any problems with breaking a 
juggernaut. We have not. Nope. We've never uh, broken any juggernauts. I've heard a few people talk about it, but just like I said, a, a few people. I think we, we have two or three, and we don't have We've any problems with them. haven't had any problems with them. All kind like we uh, I mean we have some pavement use, but mostly off road. Yep. I'd say at least five or six hours on each one, and we've, haven't had any problems. We've been rough on them, yeah, too. of course. Heavy use. I mean, yes, you know, <laughs> it's us. Uh, let's see here. Thanks for your uh, your contribution there, dude. Uh, from Sean, will there be a mini mayhem and bring back the Black Widow? Yes, we're planning on doing a mini mayhem come June or July of the summer. That's the plan. We're going to do the paint swap meet uh, later this month in Texas, and we're going to see how that goes. And uh, assuming the whole vaccination thing continues to roll out and people, you know, the, the whole virus thing, like, starts to go away, that um, you know, I think we're going to bring Mini Mayhem back. Yeah, I've what been about, missing it. What about the Black Widow? Yeah, the Black Widow. I would like to bring that back, dude. The problem is we only have two 670s. One of them is on the drag rail. The other one is on... The, the Honda, Honda Davidson. Davidson. Yeah. So I don't really want to take either one apart right now. But I, yeah. the Black Widow is going to make a comeback because that was a legendary machine. It's in the garage. It's not going anywhere. It's no. it's out of the rain. It's doing fine. Yeah. I look at it every time I go into the garage. Let's see here. Oh, going through some more of these super chats. Let's see here. From Creative Experience. Starting my own custom cross cart. Oh, cross cart, yep, and go kart fabrication business for adults. Still in the works, finding a lathe and a welder, but other than that, ready to rock. Hope to be to work together someday. Yeah, that'd be fun, man. I'm looking for a lathe too. Well, good luck. Good luck with the, uh, the starting cross the, the cross cart and fabrication business. Yeah, dude. I hope you have some experience because building a cross cart, having no experience is well, difficult. It's a. It's, uh, a little expensive too for for what we did. It was expensive, and I just don't see a lot of profit from you know. You'd have to price it so high. I don't know if unless anyone, you can crank them out really fast. Yeah, but hey, yeah, hey we, good good luck to you, dude. I hope yeah. the cross cart goes well. Um, yeah, ours was ours was amazing. It was expensive, but and it, it was took awesome. a lot of time. Yeah, but yeah. It, if we made another one, it would take a whole lot less time. So that might work yep. out for you, dude. Uh, but anyway, yeah, good luck to you. Let me get this one. Oh, uh, we've already done this oh, one. Yeah, See, okay. yeah, the problem, I chose a, a difficult format that I didn't consider when I was looking at these super chats. Um, let's see here. So the Trail 90. <laughs> Back to the ST90. Back to the ST90, Yeah, man. what do you got, man? Um, so I, I really like the uh, everything that's on it, the high-low, the big rims, the cushy seat. That thing's going to be awesome to ride around. But I'm not going to be riding it a lot. Okay, I will. Well, good. It needs a good home. You going to wear a, a brown paper bag over your head? No, that would that would be in the grocery cart behind. I'm going to have a full face helmet. <laughs> okay. So, uh <laughs> just just to let y'all know the the Trail 90s uh, name is Baby. Yeah, it's Baby. Baby the Trail 90. The previous owner named it. Yes. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, we are, uh, going to be wrapping things up here. If we, we have two more super chats to get to, um, but if we missed yours, we will get to it, uh, in two weeks or so when we post our second podcast, this is our first ever one. So there are definitely a couple of kinks to work out. Yeah. Let us know down in the comments what, uh, I don't know what you want to see improved and what else you want to hear about. Um, just, you know, Format, content, what do you want to see? What do you want to hear? I want to know. We definitely like to talk about what, you know, what y'all want to see. Yeah. And, 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 you know, maybe give us some ideas on our next build or whatever because, uh, you know, ideas are, are good. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. So this is from Josh. When are we going to see the Ducardi Grand Prix lap time? You're a funny guy, Josh. Man, uh, you must not like us very much. John's yard is a little bit too rough for for the uh, Ducati. Um, it was okay at his parents' house, but it was still pretty rough. And and the yard here is two or three times rougher, and also a lot bigger. So the speeds would be a lot higher, very much higher. Yeah, I terrifying. 
I did 102 miles per hour in like an eighth mile. You have probably a quarter mile. No, it's like a thousand feet from end to end. So okay, yeah. So like an eighth mile max, including braking zone. Okay, I'd like to uh, measure it. All right, we're gonna break out the tape measure here, guys. Yep. Yep. <laughs> anyway, Ducati uh, would not be the best fit around the current no. cars and cameras Grand Prix. Oh man, we have a bunch more super so, sets. Yeah. Uh, let me get the Howard. Do it, man. Uh, Howard, uh, thank you for your contribution. Have you thought about trying a different front suspension? Spring, shock on the inside, pivot point in the middle, and tire on the outside. Um, for Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what. Maybe shock on the, inside. Maybe the uh, well, it's either the, hmm, I'm thinking cross cart. Maybe. If you're talking about the cross card, then, yeah, we're planning on redesigning the front end. But we're just going to go with another independent front suspension setup. Yes. So we will come up with something different. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, from Ryan, uh, thanks for your donation, man. Would you ever consider building an ultra no- ultralight aircraft? My man. I thought about it. Yeah, of yeah. course, man. Do you want to tell them that story you told me that you tried to do when you were nine years old? Oh, no. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I had this bright idea of getting my radio flyer wagon and uh, getting some, making some wings come off of it and go down the hill at a really high rate of speed and uh, try for flight, but uh, never happened. Did and you I'm, ever do it? No. No. It's probably for the best. Yes. Because I did a lot of stupid stuff whenever I was a kid. I think I've seen a Calvin and Hobbes uh, comic with that or something. That's funny. I just picture a little Ike uh, flying down a hill I, <laughs> with I his think, little goggles on. I think, af- <laughs> I think after that idea, I got my first go-kart. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> That's probably what happened. Uh, but ultralight aircraft, um, I know myself. I like to be risky behind the wheel of vehicles. Yeah, uh, so man, probably not the best idea. It'd be cool though. I'd like to get maybe like a Cessna one day. It would be really, really cool. I'd rather have the ultralight. Yeah, less to break, right? Well, you, and you don't have to have a pilot license. True that, which is yeah. crazy, but kind of cool. I mean, like if I lived in the middle of nowhere, dude. Sure, but there are a lot of trees around here. Yeah, power lines. Yeah. Uh, from VG three O J. You want to take this one? Okay. How he's at? Thank you for your contribution. How is the Nissan 300ZX doing? Oh, I love that car. Seen it in the background and wanted to know how it's going. I love 300ZXs and I am planning on buying one pretty soon. Love the videos, guys. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, dude. Um, yeah, the Nissan's doing good. Uh, just got some brakes on it, didn't it? It did. Yes. Our friend Peyton. He put some brakes on it, and after like a dozen runs to the parts store, in a week, <laughs> <laughs> finally got the right parts for it. I love that car. Um, I have a photo when I was like three years old sitting in that thing. Uh, maybe I need to put it on the podcast one day. But uh, and my dad had that car. Uh, he bought it in like it's a 1990. He bought it in probably 92. I think, or three. I think it's an 89. It was. It's a 90 model year. It's a 90 it was, model it was year. Manufactured in 89. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I love that car. It's a five speed two plus two in red, uh, non turbo model with 105,000 miles on it. It still has a new car smell to it, or it, it smells like a Nissan 300 ZX. It smells nice. Yeah. It, it, it remember, it reminds me of whenever, whenever I rode in a car like that in the early nineties. Yeah. Still has the bag phone in it too. Yeah. It's got a car phone in car it. Car phone. Yeah. Uh, I love that car. Um, but, you know, it's because I've always grown up with it. That's the car I learned to drive stick on. Um, it's it's great. Uh, that being said, 300 ZXs and kind of modern Z cars in general are generally very reliable, but their engines are so freaking massive, and the, the, the bodies are usually so small that they're really difficult to service. I never enjoyed working on one. Yeah. Even yours. Every time. Every time I'd go visit him when he worked at the uh, mechanic shop, when he was working on a Z car, he was he was usually pretty cranky. Yeah, none of the cars you brought were fun to work on. So moving on, <laughs> Daniel, <laughs> Daniel, day. Oh goodness, can you can you uh, say this for me, Dace? Uh, from Daniel uh, Dasenroth. Okay, thank you. 
I thank you for your contribution. I have seen a casket in the background of some of your videos. What is the plan there? If it's the uh, rose colored one, just trying to save my family some money, you know. Yeah. Just if kidding. it's if it's the rose colored one or Pepto Bismol, uh, that one's going to get turned into a go kart. It's the coffin cart. If it was the uh, the 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 brown one, I'm just trying to save some money down the road, you know. I hear you. Yeah. You ought to see the inside of it. <laughs> it's awesome. It's got a beautiful picture in Doesn't there. Doesn't it have uh it's the Lord's Supper? Yeah, dude. It's like the most awesome casket ever. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you how do you go about buying a used casket? I wouldn't say used. I mean, you don't go buying used caskets. But you didn't buy it from the showroom. I did not buy it. Okay, no. Um, the, f- the first one I bought, uh, it originally, uh, a church had it and they used it in some of their plays and I picked up the casket pretty cheap there. The second one actually came from a junk man who had acquired the casket from a funeral home that had a leaky roof. The funeral home was trying, just throwing the casket away because who wants a casket with watermarks all over it so uh they disposed of the casket and i bought it for i don't know 150 bucks or something like that and uh it rocks and the funniest thing yeah. is is that anytime he goes and buys a casket he drives his hearse to go pick it up that's right no no i took a honda fit to pick up the last one are you serious <laughs> it was hanging out of the back dude <laughs> what what were the like reactions on these other people's faces oh there were people driving by like Rubber necking so hard. They were. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> so that's awesome. Yep. Uh from Baby Finkelstein. I like that name. Me too. Please do a pocket bike build or a super pocket bike build. Don't we have a pocket bike sitting up in the uh garage? Is that a pocket bike? Yes. We got it from some subscriber fans and uh while we were in Texas, and we hadn't done anything with it yet, but I'm hoping to. Yeah, we, we've we had a this pocket bike for... Probably like, two years now, probably. Dude, I was still... I was in college, so... Wow. Uh, probably four years ago. Oh, my goodness. At don't, least four years ago. Don't If you're on here, don't hate us. Yeah, sorry, we'll, dude. We'll get to it's it. It's just been our rainy day project. Yes. It's just, yeah. Not <laughs> enough rain. <laughs> Not enough rain. Don't say that, man. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. So from, uh, we had some more super chats come through. So thank you for all your donations. Yep. I know we just said two, like five ago. So. Uh, yeah. We're just going to keep going. Um, uh, Maddie B gaming. When are you going to build a proper ramp? Um, well, eventually, um, I really like the, uh, well, both ramps, you know, the problem with building a proper ramp is, uh, you have to have a proper landing with a proper ramp and I'm just not I don't think I can do a proper landing yet. I need more practice. Thank you for the comment. Uh, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, that and uh, uh, you could do it with my tractor. It'd just be, take a really long time. Yeah. I'm not that good at using my own tractor, to be honest. And neither of us really have that much time to, to be doing it. Uh, when we're not in the garage, we're doing other things, paying bills, seeing our friends and family, stuff like that. Uh, so we're planning on doing something about that soon, um, but we'll see. I don't want to get hurt. Yeah, me neither. But a proper ramp would be pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you want me to get this? No Brad 08 Stagnant. No, dude. Brad 08 Stang GT. Oh, come on, brother. gracious. A fellow Mustang owner. Okay. Ike, how does it feel at this point after having left your job to do YouTube full time? Big fan and longtime follower. Keep up the great work, guys. Oh, it's pretty good. It's a lot better than having a real job. Although, I ain't going to lie. I'm working harder now than <laughs> than whenever I did have a job with the old boss. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it's going to be good in the long run, and I'm I'm enjoying it. So, a little blushy here. Thank you. <laughs> uh, from Idiot Proof Garage, are you going to attend any gambler events in the Northeast? I'm not sure. I hadn't really dawned on me this year. If anything, um, maybe the OG gambler. I'm not really sure. I haven't talked about that. I would like to do some in the southeast. I know there was uh, a mini bike enduro in Tennessee that we missed out on last year. Dang it. 
I know. I would like to go. Uh, so probably southeast. Northeast is just a bit of a drive for us. Yes. Um, especially if we're, like, bringing our own bike. I didn't even know about any of in the northeast. Yeah, they're everywhere, dude. There are wow. gamblers everywhere. Okay. They did one in Iceland, man. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. Um, So I believe that is the end of the Super Chat questions. Let me okay. just... Oh, no, never mind. Oh, goodness. <laughs> we got more. They just keep coming. <laughs> yep. Oh, uh, let's see here. Uh, there Let's we go. Got it. Okay, I'll get this one. Alex Springman, thank you for your contribution. Have you thought of electric power steering on your trophy truck or another build? I have have some great times watching your builds over the years. Thank you very much. Um, electric power steering, we've talked about it, um, but I'm not exactly sure... Uh, where to get them yet I, I know they're out there i hadn't really done my research um but i don't know we just when we start to build things we don't exactly plan them out all the time it's just kind of a wing it thing and it's like we think about the build and then we're building it the next day there's no like real planning so um maybe we can look into it in the future yeah and what ends up biting us in the tail more often than not with a big complicated build is that we're using spindles from a Mazda Miata. We're using a rear end from a Chevy Chevette. We're using an engine from a BMW motorcycle. None of these parts are designed to be used together. Right. And and we're doing this because we're trying to be as cheap as possible. We like doing the builds like what anybody can do. I'd like to ball out a little bit at, at some point, but, um, one day. Yeah, because, like, if I mean, like, I'm okay to spend some money if it saves us a whole lot of time and hassle and we get a better result. But, I mean, I think that we've done a really good job using what we have. What can be better than a trophy cart going around the track and getting on the very top of the leaderboard for our track? That's yeah, true. That thing is a beast. It's, it's pretty mean. It is crazy fast. Yeah, I'm waiting on the repowered cross cart still. That that that'll I'm be pretty, that time pretty good. Back. Yeah. Okay. I'd uh, like to see it. <laughs> All right. This appears to be the last one. Okay. From C. W. Gaskell. What volume are you running the welder and plasma cutter? What voltage. voltage? Thank you. What voltage are you running the welder and plasma cutter? Love the channels. Keep up all the good work. C. W. I'm gonna be honest, buddy. I don't know. I just press the back button on the welder and find whatever looks to be the gauge I'm welding. Two forty. Oh, that that kind of voltage, yeah. Yes. The the heavy duty or 220, one. 220, whatever. 220, yeah. 220, 230, The one you plug your dryer into. Yeah. Works pretty darn good. Yeah. Uh, in the early builds, it was 110. Yep. And yeah, well, they did a pretty good job. Dad's garage. It did it did pretty good, but it did a lot of. You remember? Sputtering. So yeah, my what we we would plug the one ten and the welder in, and it would throw the breaker like half the time. So yeah. what we did was we just plugged in a hundred foot extension cord. <laughs> you remember help, that? I help forgot all cushion, about that. Yeah. Help cushion. And it the, worked. The like, spikes. The idea stuff. was it would help even out the, yeah, the, the voltage is, spikes. We don't recommend doing that because it's actually pretty bad, bad on for the, the welders. welders. Yeah. But worked. we never we never had a welder blow up on us. So. No, dude, still using that same one from yep. all those yep. years ago. Pretty good. It's hilarious. So that seems to be the end of our super chats. I will go back after the show and uh, and and make sure we addressed all of them. Uh, but uh, thanks everyone for tuning in, and thanks everyone for your donations. And it looks like we have about uh, sixteen hundred people watching right now. It's awesome. Fourteen hundred likes. So thank you. Yeah, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And, Pretty good uh, for our oh, first... Uh, oh, man, that's another one that just came through. <laughs> um, anyway, we will we will get to the rest of the Super Chats the next show. How about that? Okay. Um, so next show, man, we don't even have it scheduled, and we don't know what we're talking about. But Aren't we going to be in Texas? Yeah, two weeks from now, we're going to be... Oh, we're going to be off. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll figure something out. Okay. Uh, what we're going to play by ear, this is a new thing. But thanks, everyone, for tuning in to our first ever episode of At The Wheel with Cars and Cameras. Um, be sure to subscribe to our second channel, which is At The Wheel with Cars and Cameras, if you want to rewatch this episode. And, uh, yeah, thanks again for tuning in, everybody. Um, let us know. What do you want to see? Yeah, because we'd like to talk about it. Got anything else?
Yeah, check me out at Isaac. It'll be <laughs> fine. Oh, like clockwork. On, on YouTube <laughs> and uh, uh, Instagram. Let's see if I can get in one go. And uh, check out uh, At the Wheel of Cars and Cameras. Yeah, and uh, for sneak peeks on what we're up to in between episodes and podcast episodes now, uh, go on Facebook at Cars and Cameras Reviews. And uh, you can see my Instagram at John underscore cars and cameras for sneak peeks on what we're up to. And um, you can see this mini bike we've been talking about on uh, my Instagram right now. It is pretty mean. Real sweet. Yeah. Thanks again for tuning in, everybody. Let's see if I can figure out how to turn this thing off. How do you turn this thing off? <laughs>